It's in proximity to Seton Hospital. It's Seton Cove. And it's in proximity to the needs of people in Austin in many different ways over recent years. And today we're going to be learning about Seton Cove, the Spirituality Center. Please join us. Austin Faith Dialogue at the crossroads of religion and life. A series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson on behalf of Austin Interreligious Area Ministries. And today we're very pleased to have with us some folks who have been performing a very special ministry in Austin in recent years, and that is uh, Seton Cove. Spirituality, one of the most widely used terms these days, and yet one that has been seldom defined with any precision. We are going to have the benefit then of these folks who are connected to the Spirituality Center here in Austin called Seton Cove. Uh, Patty Spears, we're glad to have you as the executive director of this organization. Glad to be here. And Sister Hannah, we're glad to have you as uh, from the Seton Healthcare System and also on the staff of Seton Cove. Good to be here. And we are uh, wanting to just first of all get a sense, uh, Patty, of you know what it is, how it came about, when it came about, why it came about, all those. Okay. Questions that begin with W. Well, uh, Seton Cove came about because of the vision of our founder, Sister Mary Rose McPhee, mm -hmm. who um, is a daughter of charity and has been an executive in the Seton healthcare system. And she retired uh, from being the CEO of a hospital in New Orleans and came back to Austin and did some work with uh, Spirituality and Work, an organization that was in existence at that time. And then when she finished that, um, she put together a lot of focus groups to see if there was a need for such a thing as an interfaith spirituality center. Because even though Sister Mary Rose is, of course, Roman Catholic, her dream was that this would be an interfaith place where people of all faith, of no faith, people seeking, people searching, mm -hmm. could come. Mm -hmm. And hence the name Cove uh, as a savior, but also a place um, where you could be stimulated, where you could be challenged to grow. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that that uh, this got underway? I believe it was 1994. Okay, so it's six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. And um, going strong. Sister Hannah, when did you come with the group? I came four years ago uh, from Washington D.C. I had worked with the poor there and worked with uh, the energy and um, with AIDS patients and with people on the streets. Before the show started, you were telling me about how you work within the hospital setting. I mean, you spend part of your time at the Cove, across yes. the street from the hospital. And by the way, this is located... At 3708 Crawford Street, which is um, a couple of blocks west of the Seton Medical Center on 38th mm -hmm. Street. For those of us who are very earthy, mm -hmm. I think of it as next to uh, the yogurt. That's the, absolutely, that's what we always tell people. It's <laughs> next to the yogurt shop. Or for some women, second time around store. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. uh, but um, you're, you're, you're dividing your time. So at the hospital, you were telling me that you're working with patients and with a staff. Yes. What do I, you do with them? I visit patients. I visit a lot of heart transplant patients, but I also visit patients with cancer, any patient who's referred to me. And patients are referred to me by physicians, by other patients, and by uh, a lot of the hospital staff. Mm -hmm. And so what I do with them many times is work with them about what's their, what's their spiritual journey right now in their sickness. Mm -hmm. And I also do uh, energy work, what I call holistic touch. And touch has a great power of connecting people, mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And it really has a quieting effect. And one of the greatest compliments, I think, or the greatest effects that uh, touch has had on people is when they tell me, I have found that quiet place within myself where I can now go. And I don't have to be there. 
and mm -hmm. I try to teach people to be in their experience of the here and the now. Many times working with their breath, touching them, helping them with visualization, and helping them with the reality of their lives as they go through suffering. I'd like to come back to that because I think that uh, the fact that you have this, not just conferences, not just workshops, but you have a healing process that's going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Does, is this healing going on over at the Cove as well? Yes, I think it absolutely is going on. Not by a hospital bed. as Sister Not by Hammers a hospital did. bed. No, and that's part of the whole idea, of course, of holistic, that if you're if you acknowledge that you have a spirit and tend to your spirit and nurture your spirit, then we feel like in many cases your body will also be better. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I think that healing goes on at the Cove all the time in the sense of community that people get when they come to our programs, especially our Thursday luncheons, which we have all year round except for two weeks in December. Um, that's a nice sense of community and at those Thursday luncheons uh, we have speakers from the community of Austin who will come in and sort of tell a little bit of their story. Uh, for instance, in January we're doing spirituality and art and in February we'll do, our theme will be spirituality and music and in March it will be spirituality and money. Mm -hmm. I noticed that's right before income tax That's time. right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to try to help you approach that with a soothed soul. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> but now, Thursday lunch, mm -hmm. uh, open to the public? Absolutely, open to the public, and uh, the cost is $10 for the program, and we provide the lunch as a gesture of hospitality. Mm -hmm. uh, and the program lasts an hour so that you can, if you're on your lunch hour, you can get in and get out in an hour. I see. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't we put up, uh, I think we have a, uh, just uh, to information here about your location there on Crawford and phone number and so on. So if people would like to find out more about this, they can call and uh, mm -hmm. they're invited to lunch and then afterwards they can go to the yogurt shop for dessert. That's right, they sure can. <laughs> and sometimes people like to come a little bit before lunch. Uh, we have a meditation room. Sometimes people like to just come and sit in there and kind of recollect themselves mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. few moments before the lunch. Okay, well, <clears throat> spiritual direction. Isn't that what every church does? No. It's not? It's not. Oh, my goodness. I thought that's what church, churches and synagogues and all these religious organizations are about. Well, spiritual direction, as I know that you know, Richard, is an ancient tradition in the church. Um, and what it is, it sounds more directive than it really is. It's a process of discernment, and it's meeting with a director who... Um, by process of her own seeking, her own journeying and asking questions and her journey with God, uh, can maybe act as a guide uh, for another person. And in spiritual direction, what we try to do is help people become who God is calling them to be, to know who it is that they're called to be in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wonder, wonder if you're an atheist. I wonder if you have no conviction about the existence of God. Mm -hmm. Is there a place or a purpose for that person mm -hmm. to see and go? Mm -hmm. um, we believe that people, that all people are spiritual people even if you don't believe in God because we think all of us have a place deep inside of us where our values are formed and held and so to be in touch with that deep center, I think all people have a sense of that. Um, and if you're an atheist, uh, I don't know, you might be coming to uh, the Seton Cove to sort of get in touch with that center in you and maybe to ask a lot of questions because one definition of atheist is anyone who doesn't agree with the prevailing notion of God. And one of the things that we really emphasize at Seton Cove is for people to be able to recognize and trust their own experience of the sacred. The sacred however they yes. de uh, define it. Yes. I remember a story about Harry Emerson Fosdick, the great uh, pastor at Riverside Church uh, in the earlier part of the 20th century and <clears throat> he had a young man come to him one day and said uh, uh, Dr. Fosdick I don't believe in God and Fosdick said tell me the, the God that you don't believe in so the young man told him and, he, and Fosdick said I don't believe in that God either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well we have conversations like that at the COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sister Hannah you're I understand you're also a registered nurse. That's correct. Uh -huh. you're, you're talented, aren't you? Well, I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But does that serve you well? Or does that is that an entree with your it relationship is. to the medical community? Yes, it is, and I have a lot of uh, background in healthcare, so I do understand where people uh, come from, both patients and employees. I've worked at different levels. I taught nursing, a school of nursing. I ran an intensive care and coronary care, so I have an understanding of the complexity of healthcare, and yet I think I'm privileged to be able to move in there now in a different role to be present where other people don't have time many times mm -hmm. and be with patients in a very different way. Also teaching, I have taught uh, over 100 nurses in the network to do what I do and also teach the public because uh, lots of the public now can use the same modalities with a lot of people who go home early from hospitals as well as the increasing number of uh, aging people in homes. Mm -hmm. And they are many times in great need of touch mm -hmm. and of care spiritually and physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. So I like to teach. And she's also available at the Cove for individuals who want to come and have holistic touch uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've heard that we're a nation of, uh, with great population of skin hunger. That's correct. Yeah. That we are, for various reasons, uh, reluctant to get close. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there's been a lot of abuse in the area of touch, and, but I think the unconditional love and presence of trust that can be built up through sacred touch, through trust of touch, mm -hmm. uh, can turn that around. And I think that's what I like to teach people, is to be centered and let love flow and be present. But I think we are in a culture where trust has been broken in the mm -hmm. area of touch. Because there's been a lot of physical, physical abuse. That's correct. Right. Yes. And uh, do you think there's any other reason? I think, you know, because we live in such a legalistic society, people are always afraid they're going to be sued. Uh, yes, they, right. they sort of become inhibited. Uh -huh. I know I uh, used to be a secondary school teacher and we were told you know you're not supposed to ever touch your kids and of course it's just the natural thing to give somebody a pat on the back but I think now that people have been so become so aware that there has been abuse then they're worried that they may be sued for some innocent act so people just kind of mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. touch which is a real shame. So the cove is a place that you can come and feel safe to yes. be in touch in yes. more than one way. Yes. Or to not be touched if you don't. Or not be touched, right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. Well, I think that uh, in the second half, I'd like to talk about the difference that this work at the Cove has made, the difference that it makes when you're in the hospital working with people who've had surgery or AIDS or whatever. And so we're going to come back to that. Folks, don't go away. This is really great. So <laughs> I look forward to having you come back. Back to Austin Faith Dialogue, where today our subject is Seton Cove, a spirituality center here in the capital city. And in introducing the program at the beginning, I made no less than three mistakes. The first was that uh, I needed to say that this program comes to you in uh, relation to the Austin Area Interreligious Ministries. We've changed the name from Austin Metropolitan Ministries, so <clears throat> I think maybe I've got it right this time. I introduced Patty Spire as Spears in the first half. Is there such forgiveness at Seton Cove? Always. Thank you. 
And uh, Sister Hannah O'Donohue. That's correct. Uh -huh. And I just wanted to get the full name there this time. And uh, I want to, you know, do I detect a bit of an Irish brogue with you? <laughs> yes, I'm not from East Texas. Yes, I'm from Ireland. Really? Yes. And uh, you, when did you come to the States? I came over after high school uh, to Houston. I'm a sister of charity of the Incarnate Word. You came to Houston from Ireland. That's correct. What a culture shock. It was. <laughs> <laughs> as well as a temperature and shock. And a temperature shock, right. That's right. That's right. And uh, now, I'd like to just focus for a moment, because in the, in the first half we were talking about the difference touch makes, yeah. and being present to people, taking time with people, helping people find that inner yeah. uh, cove of their mm -hmm. own. Uh, what difference have you seen this make with patients? Let's just say for an, in, at Seton Hospital, as you've seen this over the last four years. I would say the uh, many differences. They relax. They um, heal faster. Studies have shown that this type of work helps people with healing. It also helps them a lot with pain. Uh, patients really uh, look forward to it every day because it's the one time where everything gets quiet and they're able to go inside. So I think it touches deep to their spirit mm -hmm. and beyond where I can even measure or imagine. How can you tell the healing has occurred? Lots of times the patients themselves are the great greatest judge. Uh, patients will tell me sometimes um, that they have gotten clear sometimes something uh, with their relationship with themselves, with God, Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing how some, a lot of the patients may not have any affiliation with any church, and I don't even ask them. But um, they, they begin to see what's important in their lives. And they report to themselves, you know, this sickness has made a real difference. And some of them will say, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. I, I slow down and start thinking about what life is truly all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So patients themselves report a, a lot of shifting for themselves. Psychosomatic uh, realities, <clears throat> where the body and the spirit are of one yeah. uh, piece, in a sense. Uh, it's hard to say just exactly where the spirit has made a difference in terms of physical recovery. Yes. Uh, but you can definitely have the patients tell you what they're experiencing. That's right, and you know, there's a big difference in my mind between being cured and being healed. Uh, people ah. may um, not be cured, for example, people who are dying, but the healing process of relationship with themselves, mm -hmm. relationship with God, relationship with family, and the forgiveness of their own themselves, this is the healing that happens that is much deeper than, uh, than being cured. Mm -hmm. And even though a lot of the heart transplant patients are both cured and maybe healed, uh, lots of the patients who have cancer who die, I believe, are healed and not cured through okay. their process. Okay. Isn't that, isn't that an important distinction? Have you found that useful in terms of the work with uh, at Seton Cove? Yes. You mean the distinction between healing and curing? You're right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. It's a very important distinction. Because, you know, if you're going to take that out of a medical setting or uh, a physical setting, lots of times people will think, you know, um, they want to get what they want. Their prayers aren't answered and they didn't get what they wanted, but they may have been healed in terms of relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really the key thing, and that is, in, in the end, what everybody does want. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got spiritual direction going on yes. in terms, not only of this Thursday luncheon, mm -hmm. which is sort of an open-ended sort of thing, but mm -hmm. people want to get deeper into this. Yes, and well, how do they do that? What kind of opportunities are? What does it cost? Okay. Well, we have one-on-one -on -one spiritual direction, and we also have group spiritual direction. And uh, what we do is, uh, if you want to call the Cove, if you're interested in it, we have a 30-minute free appointment for anyone who's just curious about what spiritual direction is and wants to see if it's something that's for them. They, make, they can call and make a 30-minute free appointment. Mm -hmm. um, Spiritual direction on a one-on-one -on -one basis costs sixty dollars an hour, but we do have a uh, sliding scale with scholarships available, mm -hmm. and it costs ninety dollars for a six-week group spiritual direction that meets for six uh, one and a half hour sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you get your money then to a large extent or to a certain extent from the fees that people pay for your services. We do. About a fourth of our budget comes from program fees. 
Where does the rest of it come from? The rest of it comes, about half of it comes from the Seton Healthcare Network, and um, the other quarter of it comes from fundraising. I see. So Seton does give you more than a name. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, I wonder how unique this is at a, a hospital of the size of Seton being uh, supportive of spiritual direction in this way. Is that happening anywhere else in the country? Not that I know of. So I think we are a unique place. Um, and in the work I do, even there, there are some healers in hospitals, but uh, there's a tremendous commitment in the part of Seton for the whole area of healing mm -hmm. and looking at ways of how do we integrate the, the spirituality at the bedside. And this is very much a part of the philosophy of the mission of Seton. Mm -hmm. So we are in tune with that. But I think they're definitely um, very supportive financially. And so it's important for the network. Mm -hmm. And it's important uh, for the community that the network provides the funds to keep a resource like this open and going because it's in some places uh, there is an, another Seton Cove that's a spirituality center that's also part of the Ascension Healthcare and that's in Indianapolis, but they only serve the uh, patients and staff of the hospital. I see. And our Seton Cove is open to the whole community, so it's really a wonderful resource for people. Uh -huh. um, how many people have been served by Seton Cove over the six years? <sighs> we have, um, that is hard for me to say, I can tell you that we have 3,000 people on our mailing list right now. Mm -hmm. And that mailing list comes from, uh, is compiled from people who come to programs. Okay, so that's quite a few uh, folks that have <coughs> been in touch with you mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It's not a very big building. I've been over there and seen it. Right. It's a house, right? It's a house. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there's something about the size of it that makes it um, homey and inviting mm -hmm. and not a large institution. Even though there are times in our Thursday lunches we'd like to have more space. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there is something to... There's an intimacy about the place, and people comment yeah. on that over and over and over again to us yeah. about how good they feel when they come in. And I think Sister Mary Rose was really in tune with that and some of the early staff. Uh, and that's why we have a rose garden. Tom Spencer has uh, laid out mm -hmm. our rose garden for us. And we have benches outside for people to sit, and we have the meditation room. Uh, because, again, true to the name, it's a place where you come in off the hustle and bustle of the street and you may, maybe come in in the middle of your work day and here is a place where it's calm and safe and also hopefully inspiring and mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. By the way, I noticed that you've got in your lap, Patty, <laughs> the Hindu scripture. I do, the Bhagavad Gita. Are you going to read, read the scripture to us here for a bit? I'm going to read you a quote from the scripture. And is, the reason I'm gonna, I brought this along, because I think it's encouraging to people who are not, uh, maybe, maybe they're not attending church right now, or maybe they have fallen away, and they're just wondering, should they even take the trouble to explore their spirituality? And I think this is very encouraging, because what it says is, on this path, effort never goes to waste, and there is no failure. Even a little effort toward a spiritual awareness will protect you from the greatest fear. Hmm. So I think that's very encouraging. You don't have to be uh, a saint. You don't have to be a saint. And that's uh -huh. one thing we'll really stress because none of us are <laughs> saints over at the Seton Cove. Uh -huh. So you can come over and see a bunch of non-saints. Yeah. Well, um, I think also that is an emphasis on how interreligious this uh, mm -hmm. work is. Mm -hmm. Do you have do you have Hindus? Do you have Muslims? Do you have Buddhists or others? We, of other our, world our religions. Our programming includes all of those things. Now, of course, our own particular roots are in the in the Judeo-Christian faith tradition, mm -hmm. and I think that's important for people to know because it's not like a smarter's board of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We do think that you need to go deep, but this is a way for people to be introduced to different. Uh, traditions. We did have a Buddhist program on uh, death and dying earlier in the year. We're having another Buddhist retreat in the spring. Uh, we've had people from the Barsana Dham Hindu temple come and, and give an introduction to their program. And then in uh, the middle of January, we'll have uh, introduction to Jewish spirituality with Rabbi Kerry Baker. And the idea is, is that people will find a tradition that works for them and go deep. Mm -hmm. and not just have a, a smattering of this or that, but mm -hmm. that they really will make a connection and go deeply. 
But I think, I also think that we learn from other traditions, because um, I'm an Episcopalian, a Christian, but I have learned a lot from reading uh, Buddhist teachers like Thich Nhat Hanh. And so I think that we, we're, rather than feeling threatened by other traditions, we should know what, what our tradition is, but say how can it be complemented by maybe some of the practices of another tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the work that we, in meditation, is so common for all traditions, being quiet, being still, quieting the mind. Mm -hmm. And all the traditions, they may come at it a little differently, but that's one thing that in our uh, meditation groups where people study and look at, what is it that can help any of us in, in meditation, as an example? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> do you have uh, evidence that what you've done in Seton Cove has then fed back into congregations in one way or the other? In other words, uh, if people say that they're from a given faith mm -hmm. tradition, do they then say, hey, this is, I've taken this back in some way and have made a difference in the local parish mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. synagogue? Or We've helped people set up uh, their own contemplative prayer groups in parishes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, worked in a couple of parishes like that. Uh, and people will come to Seton Cove who are unchurched and eventually find their way back into uh, a parish. Mm -hmm. And people will come to, and take a class and then maybe go teach a Sunday school class in their parish from what they learned at the Seton Cove. Mm -hmm. I've been able to go down to Wimberley to a church down there and teach because there's so many people from Wimberley interested in, in holistic touch and a parish down there, so people in that community, I said, well, I'll go down if you get enough people, and I've gone down and taught. So we do like to go out to the community because we feel strongly uh, that people sh should not always have to come to us, right. and we right, do like right. to go out. Go to churches, <coughs> we have done, we've gone out a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. we, we, like. we have a clergy advisory group made up of different clergy of the area who um, help us know how the Cove can be a resource for their congregations, okay. and then also they serve as resources for <coughs> us. Okay, so it's a two-way street. It is. Yes. It is. we got just less than a minute. Now let's have, uh, once again, the uh, information here about uh, the number. Uh, you see, I, I haven't been to the optometrist recently. I can't quite read that. Would you like to read that for us? It's 451-0272. Uh -huh. And could I mention just one event we have coming Very up? Very quickly. It's February 8th. It's a music event, music and spirituality with Tish Hinojosa oh. and, and Jimmy LaFave and the Bells of Joy. Oh, yeah. And that will be February 8th, and you can call the Cove to find out. All right. Well-known entertainer. That's right. That's right. I want you to know that it's been touching to have you here today. <laughs> Can't you. end it without actually reaching <laughs> over and saying thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you Richard. <laughs> Blessings in you and your work. And, and uh, on each of you that are looking in today, we're just delighted to have had you. Hope you'll be with us again on Austin Faith Dialogue next week. I'm Richard Thompson on behalf of Austin Area Interreligious Ministries bidding you farewell. <laughs>